think we'll head back to London about nine. Are you sure, darling? You're both welcome to stay the night if you want. <laughs> Thanks, Mum, but we've got to get back. <laughs> we've got to go to a funeral tomorrow. A friend of Dominic's died week before last. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Was he a special friend? Yes, he was a very special friend. And he died? In a car crash. Yeah. Oh, thank God for that! <laughs> oh. oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> oh, I... I'm so sorry. I, I, I just thought he might have died of... 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 Of what? Uh, of... of... Do you mean AIDS? Oh, AIDS! Oh, I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> oh, come on, Dad. So he died in a car crash, then, and not of AIDS? Yes. Are you sure he didn't have AIDS but still died in a car crash? <laughs> For Christ's sake, Dad, can you try and be a bit more sensitive? Now, since you brought it up, both Dominic and I have been tested and we're fine. Now, if you can't keep your foot out of your mouth, just keep quiet. I'm most dreadfully sorry. I... You'll have to forgive me. I... I'm afraid I'm not really cut out for the modern world. That's all right. It's all right. Thank you. Oh, well. Let's get on with the grub, eh? Football's on in a minute. <laughs> I don't really follow football. Well, what's the matter with you? A puff or something? <laughs> Greetings of the season to you, Mr Chamley Warner. Yes, it's Christmas. A time for relaxing in the bosom of one's family, free from the formality of working life. Yes, would you care to relax in the bosom of my family this Christmas, freed from the formality of working life? Yes. <laughs> That's better. Are you feeling sufficiently relaxed and unwound, Mr. Chamlefona? Most certainly. But do beware of purchasing inferior presents for your loved ones. Defective goods can be dangerous. It's easy to tell if goods are defective. They have the words made in Belgium written on the bottom. Here are some suggestions for healthy, wholesome and practical gifts for the whole family. For the youngest, how about this durable dummy? It'll keep baby quiet for hours on end. And because it's made of pure lead, it'll be some months before it's sucked away to nothing. And for the elder child, why not splash out on the splendid Croydon Aerodrome game? <laughs> Simulate the daily life of a busy aerodrome, where planes are taking off and landing, sometimes at a rate of three or four a week. What a fine game. You can almost imagine yourself in the cockpit. But don't let Dad get hold of it. <laughs> Pets can be a lot of fun for the children at Christmas. If you've travelled in India, you'll know that exotic pets make ideal Yuletide gifts, such as lion cubs, chimpanzees, very small elephants, or indeed, alligators. A word of caution, baby animals can easily grow into larger animals. So a day or two after Christmas, you'll need to shoot it with one of these. <laughs> and with that needlework kit her aunt gave her, your daughter will be able to turn the pet into a handy handbag. <laughs> Technology now plays its part in every family home. There can be little more exciting than gathering round to inspect the latest gadget. British scientists have come up with another first, a wireless with pictures. You can actually see the people who are speaking to you on the wireless, as if they were in your own home. <laughs> now we go over to Balmoral, where his majesty is the nation. But let's not forget that the printed word is still very much with us, a selection of wholesome reading material is both educative and informative. <laughs> May I Killed a Thousand Fuzzy Wuzzies by the Reverend Aubrey Bagshot is a heartwarming account of one man's spiritual journey through Africa. And for the younger child, something a little lighter. Simon Shoots the Smiling Sambos. <laughs> and for those long motoring journeys over Christmas, how about this handy dashboard attachment? These days we're all aware of the problems of driver fatigue. But now you can combat it with this handy whiskey pick-me-up. <laughs> but not everyone can afford expensive presents in the festive season. At Christmas, one should always remember the poor. Indeed. They may attempt to burgle your house while you're out of church. <laughs> but
that shortage of money should not be an obstacle to the joy of giving. Simply make your own presents from objects you find around the home. For instance, a tin of petrol and a box of matches becomes a simple and enthralling petrol and matches game. <laughs> so, it's back to work tomorrow, Mr. Chumley Warner. Yes, it will be pleasant to wind up again and stop relaxing. Merry Christmas, Grayson. Merry Christmas, Mr. Shumler Warner. Excuse me, Hill. Uh, I wonder if I might be so bold as to ask your good self for an autograph. Certainly. Yeah. Thanks very much, Hill. If you could sign to Frank Doberman, with respect. Yeah, yeah so have you got a pen? Oh, I'm sorry. Foolish of me. Uh, Congratulations on your success this season. Thank you. Yeah, still in performance by yourself in your Williams Renault car. Yeah, thank you. I myself, in fact, to drive a Renault 19 1.4 TLS injection. You yes. might as well come around our gaff and give it a spin any time you like. Mm, thanks. As long as you didn't drive it like one of your Formula One machines around our way. You wouldn't be too happy about that. No, really. I would not. We live in a residential area, and in such an area, you would abide by the highway code. I see. You better bloody see. If I lent you my Renault 19... Um, look, have you got that pen? Quiet, Hill, don't interrupt. If you started accelerating to speeds of up to 140 miles an hour in sunny glade close, with little kiddies playing on their bikes, if you took the corner out of Honeysuckle Drive at over 80 miles an hour, I should say, oi! Hell, no! This is not a chicane at Silverstone. This is Merrifield Drive leading into the Gables. Apply the brakes now. Get out of my car. You're a menace to yourself, other road users and pedestrians. Look, mate, I've got to go. Hill, come back! How dare you go when I'm administering a reprimand? <laughs> that Mansell, he understands the essentials of residential driving, but you, you're a piece of scum! <laughs> These bloody celebrities. Who do they think they are? OK, Jim, well, if you hear anything, let me know and I'll do the same. Here he is now. Look, he's just arrived back. I'll call you in a minute. Kevin! What? Can you come down here, please? Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> what? <laughs> Kevin, where the hell have you been? What? It is two o'clock in the afternoon, darling. We have been really worried about you. <sighs> you are so sick, making me pathetic. It is not pathetic. Kevin, we haven't heard a thing from you since yesterday tea time. Where did you stay last night? I went to Perry's, didn't I? Well, you didn't stay at Perry's. I spoke to his mum. I didn't say I stayed there. <laughs> I said I went there. Well, Perry's mum didn't see you all evening. I didn't go into Perry's. I went there. Perry saw me coming and came out. So that is why his bloody mum didn't see me. <laughs> so where did you stay? Pete's. Then why did Pete's dad ring us this morning and ask if Pete was here? Well, I don't know, do I? Why don't you ask him? I did. Pete told his parents he was staying here. So? Well, he didn't, did he? And you didn't stay at Perry's, and you didn't stay at Pete's. We did stay at Pete's! <laughs> Kevin, I spoke to his dad. Well, his dad's a bloody liar, then. <laughs> we stayed at Pete's till 11. Oh, you stayed till 11, did you? And then where did you go? Well, I don't know, do I? Well, I would have thought you were exactly the person to know. Oh, for God's sake. Come in. Oh, Miss Jackson. Good morning. How are you? Ah, oh, Perry. Hello, Miss Perry. Good morning. How are you? It's so 